We move to Vadim talking about the slope of the molecular Kinnikut Schmidt. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, no? Well. It's not good. Um, yeah, I think I can. What about now? Is it better? Uh, please say something. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> thanks. Um, so yeah, thanks, uh, everyone. I first of all would like to thank the organizers of this magnificent meeting, and I'll be uh, I'll talk about the uh, work we've been doing with Andrei Kravtsov and Nignagen at the University of Chicago, and specifically I'll be talking about somewhat uh, different flavor of this Kinkel-Schmidt relation, specifically about relation that includes only molecular gas. And even more specifically, uh, I'll be talking about the origin of this uh, almost linear correlation between um, um, molecular gas surface densities and star formation rate surface densities observed on Kalparsic scales uh, in galaxies. Um, so. Such correlation is uh, expected because both uh, molecular gas and star formation rate are uh, both follow um, dense state of the gas. However, the normalization and the slope of this relation, which I observed, are both quite surprising. So first of all, the normalization tells us that uh, the characteristic depletion time of molecular gas is of the order of uh, two billions of years, which is very long. It's much longer than any dynamical time scales uh, in the ISM, and this means that on kiloparsic scales, uh, star formation is extremely inefficient. And this was what I was talking uh, last time. So I, was I, I explained why uh, depletion times are long. So if you were not here, just talk to me or check out these papers. And uh, this time, I'll be talking about the second issue, about the origin of the linear slope. So the linear slope means that the depletion time of molecular gas is almost independent of the surface density of uh, molecular gas. And to explore this question why this is the case, we uh, ran a suite of uh, idealized simulations of uh, isolated L-star uh, uh, galaxy with the widely varied parameters of star formation and feedback to check how these local assumptions about star formation and feedback affect what we uh, get on kiloparsic scales in terms of uh, uh, the slope of molecular Kankish manipulation. So uh, what is uh, special about this set is that in addition to uh, uh, gas density and and temperature and other uh, quantities which you will find in any simulations. We also model explicitly uh, subgrade turbulence in each cell dynamically as an additional uh, uh, energy field. So if you want details, please ask me. I would not go into details how exactly we do this, but uh, the idea is that uh, because we have uh, information on about uh, turbulent velocities on unresolved scales, we can cal calculate uh, the real parameter and use it to uh, model star formation locally. And this is in more details how we do this, so we can uh, consider distribution of gas in the plane of gas density and local uh, total velocity dispersion, which is uh, very similar to the uh, density temperature diagram, except that uh, here we also add turbulent velocity split. And they uh, dominate in this cold molecular gas. Um, and then to model star formation, we adopt uh, somewhat simplistically uh, a fixed uh, value of the real parameter below which we say that the, all these gases start forming. And then we assume that uh, efficiency, instantaneous efficiency per free-fall time in this gas is constant. So we, we do this in this simplistic way so that then we can uh, change both parameters and see what happens with the uh, slope which we measure on kiloparsic scales. And another important thing to, uh, to check is uh, how the uh, slope which we assume locally affect uh, um, the slope measured uh, globally. Uh, so if, if when we set uh, efficiency per, per free-fall time to be constant, we, say that we effectively say that Local star formation rate scales is a density to the power of 1.5, but in simulation we can, of course, uh, control this and set this value to anything. Um, so this is the result of our fiducial simulation. Uh, so it, it shows uh, that molecular gas depletion time on kiloparsic scales is almost independent of the uh, surface density. So we, in this fiducial simulation, we produce something close to linear relation uh, in agreement with observations, which is uh, even though on, on the resolution scale, we uh, assume much steeper slope, which is shown here by dashed line. And then, as I said, we can uh, repeat the same simulation, but change this local slope. And even if we set much 
uh, strong dependence uh, on density. And the slope which you me then measure on kiloparsec scales uh, is still close to linear. So this is quite peculiar and this is actually another example when simulations do not, do not just reproduce whatever you put in, but instead uh, the result becomes independent of your assumptions on small scales. And uh, moreover, the result is close to what observations tell us. So this means that we can go into simulations and uh, try to understand what defines this linear slope on uh, kiloparsec scales. And uh, so we, we started uh, changing different parameters. And of course, first of all, uh, first thing to check uh, to change is uh, feedback because whenever you see something unusual happen in simulations, it's usually because of feedback. And this is not an exception. So when we uh, rerun the same simulations but without feedback, and then we boost them and boost the uh, effects of feedback by a factor of 100 by setting local efficiency uh, to 100% instead of 1%. Uh, 1%. We see that uh, as uh, feedback processes become more important, uh, the dependence of the slope measured on kiloparsec scale on the local assumptions becomes weaker. And uh, the value of uh, the uh, slope on kiloparsec scale to which feedback uh, regulates uh, is close to linear. So it means that uh, the effects of feedback are indeed very important to uh, uh, set the slope of the molecular Kane cache methylation. However, it's not only feedback what is important. It's also very crucial how we do star formation details. Uh, as a reminder, we, uh, in these simulations, we uh, use a fixed threshold in viral parameter. And, uh, if I, uh, and we get this nice linear relation. But if we do exactly the same simulation with the same feedback, same star formation, uh, local star formation prescription, but with different threshold, with threshold and density, we get much steeper relations. So we, we cannot uh, reproduce uh, the linear slope. And so, yeah, so this means that uh, star formation, and especially the choice of threshold, might be done very accurately and with, with, with great care. Um, so now we can, as we see this uh, well-defined trends in the simulations, we can now ask the question, what, the phys what is the physical origin of all these dependencies? Can we understand this or not? And uh, apparently, we, we, we ask this question ourselves, and uh, um, apparently all these trends can be understood with this very simple physical model, which also explains why uh, the normalization of depletion time is long. So I, I will not have time to go into this and explain all parts of this uh, behavior, but if you have like any specific questions, I, we, you can talk to me. But I'll, uh, now I'll just show you the overall direction in which this explanation goes. So the model is based on this idea that the uh, gas in the ISM uh, rapidly cycles between uh, non-star non forming and star forming states. So here I'm again showing this distribution of gas in our simulation in, in plane of gas density and total velocity dispersion. And three different lines are three representative uh, gas tracers from the ISM. And as you can see, they go back and forth. And what happens is that uh, feedback uh, pushes gas away from the star forming state. So it means that uh, when, whenever, whenever gas comes close to the star formation uh, state, it is removed back. So it, it spends only a short amount of time here. And uh, as a result, it has to go through a large number of cycles to be depleted. And uh, most of this time, it spends in this non-star forming state. So the uh, depletion time is regulated by the number of cycles and by the, what happens with the gas with, in this non-star forming state. So this, this explains why depletion time is long and why it's, uh, in, in some regimes, it's uh, weakly sensitive to what we assume in uh, this state. Um, and so this is what I showed last year. And in order to interpret uh, the slope of the molecular cane kachmit relation, what we need is to, uh, uh, we, we can rewrite the depletion time of molecular gas as a ratio of the uh, average depletion time in star-forming state. So it's our recipe averaged over the gas distribution below this line divided by the uh, star forming fraction of molecular gas. And then the star forming fraction of molecular gas will be given by the ratio of times, typical time scales which gas spends in these two states. So it will be uh, the time that gas spends in, in star forming stage and then in molecular stage. Um, so one, now we can combine all these equations and finally we can express the depletion time of molecular gas uh, with this uh, uh, time scales of gas evolution. And the idea is that when feedback is efficient, this, uh, uh, yes, so first of all, uh, the, all these time scales, they will depend on uh, things like uh, lo uh, local assumptions about star formation, uh, kiloparsec scale, density of gas, but the idea is that when feedback is efficient, they, uh, these trends become 
uh, dependent on each other. They are coupled because the local depletion time of uh, star forming gas, it, it defines how much energy and momentum is released in the ISM locally. And this energy and momentum uh, destroy uh, star forming and molecular gas, and thereby it limits the lifetime of gas in these states. So in this, this mechanism couples these time scales. And, and makes uh, the, uh, and the, as a result, the, the dependencies of these time scales on, for example, gas surface density cancel out and depletion time molecular gas becomes uh, constant. So again, this is quite a qualitative version of our explanation. And if you want more details, please ask me uh, or stay tuned for the paper. Um, so yeah, and here is my summary. So our result is, uh, the, the, our simulation results show that when feedback is efficient, then star formation threshold is in the real parameter we get um, molecular Kinkage methylation close to, with, with a linear slope close to what is observed. Uh, however, if we ch the choose a threshold is very important, and if, when we set it to band density based threshold, we get much steeper relation. And both normalization and the slope of these relations can be understood using this model. So, thanks. Question for Vadim. Yes. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So uh, the reason is that it's not only feedback which destroys star forming and molecular regions. It's also uh, uh, dynamical effects like gas is uh, leaving spiral arm and it's expanding or uh, differential rotation and disk what works. So it, and in this case, these effects dominate. These, these effects actually dominate the cycling of the gas in the ISM and they control the global depletion time. Another question? If not, let's uh, thanks very much again. Thank you.